from a zero problem foreign policy with its neighbours to plenty of problems with its neighbours, this description in the eyes of many analysts reflects relations between Turkey and its two important neighbours, Syria and Iraq. Ankara is accused of fueling tension in Syria and Iraq and warming up with Israel where interests are shared with Washington and Tel Aviv. Has the policy of zero tension with neighbours gone all wrong? I'm Homa Lezgi and this is the debate. In Turkey's southern city of Antakya, close to the border with Syria, protesters gather in a show of support for the Syrian leadership and people in a war that's been launched against them. <laughs> The protesters denounced Turkey's ruling party for fueling the war in Syria. Ankara has been supporting the armed insurgents in their fight against Damascus. Turkey's borders have turned into a hub for sending militants and weapons into Syria, a process which has been aided and abated by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the U.S. and the European Union. Turkey has also hosted several gatherings attended by the self-proclaimed Syrian opposition and Western and regional countries. But Turkey's interference in its neighbor's affairs is not limited to Syria. In 2012, Iraq accused Ankara of meddling in its internal affairs when Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmad Davatoglu visited the northern city of Kirkuk. What angered Baghdad was Ankara's attempt to bypass the central government by directly sealing oil deals with the Kurdish regional government. The two neighbors' relations was dealt another blow when Turkey sheltered Iraq's fugitive vice president Tarak al-Hashnami, who was convicted of running death squads in Iraq. Turkish Prime Minister Rajab Tayyip Erdogan assured Hashemi that he will not be handed over to Baghdad. In 2002, Turkey's AKP party took the helm with the motto of policy of zero problems with neighbors. But it seems that the party's top brass has backtracked on its own words. Critics say they have resorted to another policy that's stemming from the country's past, the Ottoman Empire. In his book, Strategic Depth, Ahmad Davatoglu, the Turkish foreign minister, says, the lands dominated by Ottoman culture are a strategic depth. That's what the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad says, but in another way. Only Arugan's government. Mm -hmm. Only, just to be precise, not the Turkish people. Turkish people need good relation with the Syrian people. This is Erdogan. He thinks that he is the new sultan of the Ottoman, and he can control the region as it was during the Ottoman Empire under a different, let's say, umbrella. But in his heart, he thinks that he's Khalifa. Mm -hmm. You're watching the debate. Let's introduce our guests for you. With us live from New York is author and emeritus professor of Binghamton University of New York, Mr. James Petrus. And also with us live from Ankara, professor of international relations with the Middle East University, Mr. Hossein Bakchi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us on this edition of the debate. My first question to Mr. James Petrus in the United States. Now, we'll first of all refer to Turkey's role in Syria. Mr. Petrus, besides accusing Turkey of harboring al-Qaeda-linked terrorists, Damascus also says Ankara is blocking measures for a political solution by pressuring Syrian opposition members. Would you agree with that? Well, I think uh, Turkey has uh, played a very essential role for the NATO powers because uh, it has offered sanctuary uh, support for the uh, armed insurgents. It's developed ties with the uh, fundamentalists who now dominate all of the uh, territories uh, that have been captured by these uh, radical uh, armed extremists. So I think uh, you have to understand uh, Turkey's behavior as an instrument of NATO, first of all. Secondly, uh, the fact that it has its own colonial ambitions in the region, it is uh, dominating the market in, uh, in northern Iraq in particular, it has played a formidable role in expanding uh, commercial and business interests in the Middle East. It's developing ties with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt. 
I, I think one has to see this in a broader context. Mm -hmm. One, Turkey is playing a role with NATO in trying to undermine any nationalist government. It is working with Israel surreptitiously, even as it claims to uh, support the uh, rights of the Palestinians. Yes. And most of all, I think in Syria, it has become the most decisive uh, point of operation for the uh, radical fundamentalists who are receiving full-scale support. And that's why I think many Turks are opposed to this policy in Syria, because they see that the Erdogan government is much less secular than it claims. Well, uh, Mr. Petros, against... you referred that, that, if I can just stop you there, let's just bring in Mr. Bakhti into the discussion as well and have his views heard before we move on. Now, Mr. Bakhti, if you can hear me, we had there our guests in New York telling us that uh, Turkey is acting as an instrument for NATO on uh, one part of the story, and the other part of the story is its interests. As far as its interests are concerned, it's now taking moves that are being seen by a lot of people as supporting, for instance, what I guess they were saying, a radical extremists in Syria. What's your opinion? OK, it looks like we've lost our connection there with Mr. Bakshi. We'll try to bring him back, though, just as soon as we can. Back to our guest in New York, Mr. Petrus. Now, you were saying if, if Turkey's interests are involved, it's going to, to, to do actually what it has to do, even if it involves uh, having the same interests with Israel and taking measures uh, in line with uh, Israel. But do you think Turkey is going to go as far as, if it comes to that occasion, launching direct military attack on Syria? I think Turkey will attack Syria as part of a joint operation with the uh, NATO countries. They are waiting for England, France, and the United States to engage in an air war, an open skies policy uh, which they used in Libya to try to undermine the uh, strategic advantage of Syria. I don't think Erdogan will go in by himself. I think that would be too blatant. Mm -hmm. It would lack the support inside of Turkey. It would provoke a uh, national uh, movement inside of Syria. So I think that uh, Erdogan is waiting to get some kind of a multilateral cover. Meantime, mm -hmm. uh, he's doing everything short of sending the troops in, supplying arms, uh, trainers, uh, professionals that are working with the insurgents, training them and So basically using... you, you're saying here that uh, Turkey would even go as far as launching that military strike, but even right now that it hasn't, as you say, there it is, however, working behind the scenes in supporting the insurgents. A lot of analysts have been saying that this involvement will in itself backfire by putting Ankara, for instance, for instance, at risk of a new series of violent confrontations with its minority Kurdish population. We know the PKK has been voicing solidarity at times with the Syrian Kurds, and it says it's going to launch violent reprisals if, for instance, Turkish forces target the Kurdish community in Syria. So do you think uh, it will, in the long run, affect Turkey's strategic interests or even its national security? Well, I think that Turkey, uh, the Erdogan government, faces a very formidable internal opposition to an engagement, a military engagement in Syria, because it will clearly be seen as taking part with fundamentalists and will deepen the ties between a, uh, a religious party and the state, which is anathema to all those Turks that uphold the uh, Ataturk tradition. And I, I think that this is a very dangerous game, and it's seen as such by important sectors of the Turkish military, mm -hmm. as well as many progressive people in Turkey. So I think the main danger here is that provokes and deepens internal divisions right. in Turkey by turning Turkey more and more toward an embrace with fundamentalist uh, Muslims who are uh, really an enemy of a secular state.
Okay, I, I'd like to go now to the role that uh, Turkey is playing also in Iraq. But just before that, let's bring in a comment that's been posted on our Facebook page by one of our viewers. Let's see what our viewers have had to say about this issue and we'll be back. It's all about who can control the Middle East and Muslims, money and power. In reality, Turkey is a very big friend of the Zionist state Israel. Previously, it was an open relationship. Now it's a more dangerous relationship because it's more under the table. It plays with the Middle East and Muslims' feelings and that's what makes it more dangerous. Allah knoweth best. That view and a lot of similar views like that being posted uh, on our Facebook page today regarding this uh, debate program and that is how Turkey is prepared to work with Israel or the United States when it comes to its role in the region. But uh, before I come to that aspect, Ms. Petrus, we know that uh, Turkey has been signing oil contracts, talking uh, about the oil deals with the Kurdistan regional government uh, in Iraq. Do you think it is deliberately trying to undermine the Maliki government by doing this? I mean, the Iraqi central government has been saying that these deals would deprive it of oil revenues that belong to Iraq as a whole. Some analysts have been saying that while Turkey is doing the seals on one side, on the other side, it is trying to say that we are kind of trying to keep our alliance strong with the Baghdad government as well. I, I am not sure about the larger goals of, of uh, involved uh, Turkey involving itself in the whole of Iraq. I think uh, its purpose at this time is to penetrate Northern, <clears throat> northern Iraq, especially the areas where the uh, uh, U.S. overflights protect the uh, Kurdish entity, which calls uh, which is calling for a independent status. Uh, I think in in that region, Turkey is certainly establishing it's establishing itself as the dominant economic group, and and I think it wants to consolidate its resource influence and control. And it certainly sees this as a jumping off spot, spot into uh, Central Asia. I think this uh, kind of expansionism is incremental. It's not going to be one jump uh, and take it all. I think they're mm -hmm. going to be chipping away at different uh, regions. Uh, they're chipping away in Syria, they're chipping away in Iraq. They have wider ambitions uh, throughout this region. And I think this is the strategy. They're gaining influence in Egypt uh, through the Morsi regime. Uh, they're trying to expand into uh, Tunisia. But I think uh, these are very step-by-step -step, yes. uh, operations. We, we can't see this as one uh, uh, big uh, jump from a uh, relatively isolated position yes. into a major kind of colonial or neo-colonial power. Well, I don't see just, that. Let's just refer here to a comment that's been made by Mr. Erdogan himself. He's been telling, for instance, uh, CNN Turk in one interview, and I'm quoting him here, that under Prime Minister Nuri al-Maliki, there is no real unity in Iraq. He's also said earlier that the Maliki administration, for instance, is a minority government. We've seen demonstrators even who are against Maliki carrying his pictures. And Maliki has been saying recently after these violent bombings in Iraq that Turkey is working alongside Qatar and Saudi Arabia to undermine his government using sectarian violence as a tool. Uh, now, do you think that is the case? I mean, is Turkey going as far as creating this sectarian violence as Maliki claims? Well, I, I think it's a bit of an exaggeration. The CIA was in uh, Iraq way earlier than, uh, than the Turks. Uh, it's possible and politically plausible that the Turks are encouraging uh, these uh, bombings uh, with the Saudis, but I think the, uh, the larger picture is that the U.S. has been alternating supporting Shia and supporting Sunnis depending on the moment in time. When, when they were uh, invading Iraq, they supported the Shias against uh, Saddam Hussein. Once the Shias uh, gained ascendancy and began to develop uh, a policy of openness to Iran and yes. openness to China 
and openness to Russia, uh, the U.S. switched sides and began to support the Sunnis and even elements of Al Qaeda that are associated with the Sunnis in uh, in uh, the U.S. doesn't have any uh, strategic ties yes. to either group. They have strategic interests, and the interests mm -hmm. here are to maximize their influence and control over these uh, formerly independent regimes. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd just like to remind your viewers that we did have a guest with us uh, from Ankara. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, we haven't still been able to uh, re rectify that problem that we had with his connection. We're, we will, of course, try our best to bring him into the conversation if we can. But just uh, for a short break here, let's take a listen to one of our Facebook comments again, and we'll be back with the next question. Turkey provides a route for liberal democracy for Muslims and wants to be introduced as a hero in the Muslim world. Now, that, of course, being the focal point uh, of this debate, Turkey saying initially, uh, Ms. Petrus, that it is following a policy of zero pro uh, problems. Right now, it looks like this isn't the case. Now, the question would be why this went wrong. Do you think that it was uh, Turkey basically because of its alliance with NATO or because of its uh, wishes to get itself into the European Union, whatever, had to uh, basically follow the policies of Washington and Tel Aviv here? Or do you think that the, at some point of time there was a change in priorities? I, I think uh, that it's a, an incremental process. Let's not forget that Erdogan and his party were, were, were recent arrivals to power. They had to justify themselves as a government respecting the Ataturk tradition, so they couldn't openly declare their uh, uh, religious basis of their politics. Now, it's a religious neoliberal political movement. It's not a traditionalist uh, Muslim movement. It is one that embraces uh, neoliberal capitalism and it uses its religion to build its mass base to complement hmm. that economic policies. And as a result of that, it has built bridges with more conservative Muslim groups, and these groups are currently under siege. And by Iran, hmm. in the Emirates, in Saudi Arabia, and even in Egypt today, so one has to say this, that it's not simply Erdogan building bridges or becoming a hero hmm. of Muslims. He's hated by many Muslims who don't support his allies hmm. in these very conservative Gulf states and in Egypt. The great majority of the demonstrators today are opposed to Morsi and indirectly opposed to Erdogan, the democracy yes. movements. Uh, so uh, er those Erdogan... Lines yeah, Mr. Pedro, sorry for jumping here, because along the lines that you're just mentioning there, we have a comment that uh, could be viewed as a question uh, on this issue. Let's take a look at this final comment now on our Facebook page, and I'll be back with the question related to it. The EU is shaky, and Ankara is playing right into the designs of the Wahhabi Zionists. Ankara must act wisely. A call there by one of our viewers uh, for Ankara to act wisely. You referred there, Ms. Petrus, to the opposition in Turkey. There have been similar calls, and a lot of people have been saying that uh, before this, uh, the United States did have some kind of a grip in the region, but the wave of the popular uprisings changed a lot, and the United States was losing its uh, grip over the fate of the Middle East. And this actually had contributed to Turkey's uh, important role as a regional player, even an influential player in the Islamic world. And a lot of people are saying that's why the United States actually intervened to change that. Now, uh, do you think that Turkey as uh, our viewer there was suggesting, is actually caught in a trap of some sort. Well, I don't think Turkey's in a trap. I think that Erdogan is very conscious and very deliberate in each one of his moves. Uh, the fact that he's moved in uh, to, to uh, northern Iraq, working with the Kurds, at the same time that they're uh, shooting and, and, and repressing Kurds in, uh, in eastern Turkey. 
uh, signs agreement with Ocalan at the same time that Turkey is attempting to gain influence among the Kurds in northern Syria. So I, I think he's they're playing a very clever game of divide and conquer. And I, I, I don't think there's any manipulation. Erdogan is very aware of the Wahhabis and their brand of Muslim politics, their kind of capitalism, rentier capitalism. I think these are temporary working relationships in which Turkey basically is trying to assert its own hegemony and sharing power with Israel and the United States and the European Union. It's not looking to oust them. It just wants to get its share of power and oil wealth and markets in this region. So, Mr. Petrus, just as the concluding question here before we end the show, that is uh, a lot of analysts have been suggesting that uh, from the time that Turkey decided to uh, reconcile uh, with Israel and to resume ties with Israel, this is starting to change the balance of power right now between Turkey and its neighbors, specifically Iraq and Syria. Do you think this is the start of a process? Well, let's be very clear. Israel is a dominant military power. It has nuclear weapons. Turkey doesn't. Uh, Israel gets $3 billion plus from the United States. Turkey gets nothing. Israel goes to war with Iran. The United States automatically jumps in. Uh, these give Israel a, a very important a role, militarist role, uh, as a collaborator of, of Western expansionism. Turkey is a, a dominant group with activities regarding Syria and Iraq, and it plays a very important role in relation to those mm. two countries, specifically in fomenting the overthrow of Assad and in and the uh, annexation or uh, separation yes. of northern Iraq from uh, the rest of the country. That's where its, its power lies. It's not yes. a country which can act throughout the region independently of the U.S. and Israel. James Petrus, author and emeritus professor of Binghamton University with us there from New York. Thank you very much, Ms. Petrus, for being with us. I do apologize for the technical problem. We had uh, our guest in Ankara, Professor Hussein Bakshi, couldn't be with us on this debate. Thank you very much for staying with us from Mihoma Lesgi. Until our next program, it's goodbye.